Hi, are you currently suffering from chronic pain? Mm -hmm. Are you taking opioid prescription to treat your chronic pain? Have you ever wondered how the doctors decide who should or who is a candidate for the opioid prescription versus those who should get non-opioid prescription? You may want to stick around because today I want to talk exactly about that. I want to talk about the prescribing guideline for chronic pain. Uh, this guideline was published by CDC in 2016. Some of the challenges and what CDC had to say about those challenges. Stick around. My name is Abdul Bashavuth and I welcome you to the channel. So the guideline for prescribing opioids for chronic pain is intended to improve communication between providers and patients about the risks and benefits of opioid therapy for chronic pain. The guideline itself is not intended for patients who are in active cancer treatment, palliative care, or end-of-life care. The guideline is divided into three sections. Uh, section 1 looks at determining when to initiate or continue opioids for chronic pain. Section 2 looks at opioid selection, dosage, duration, follow-up, and discontinuation. And lastly, it looks at assessing risk and addressing harms of opioid use. So let's start with the first section of the guideline, which talks about determining when to initiate or continue opioid for chronic pain. So there are three subsections under this big category. So the first subsection, it states that opioids are not first line or routine therapy for chronic pain. Always non-drug therapy, uh, meaning things such as physical therapy, exercise, yoga, should be considered first before starting a medication. And when a medication is needed, a non-opioid medication should be considered first for treating chronic pain. And these could be over-the-counter ibuprofen, over-the-counter Tylenol. It could be a prescription strength drug, which is not opioid. It could be like a lidocaine patch and so on. There's many options. So opioid should always be considered like a second or a third line. Second part, uh, it talks about establishing and measure goals for pain and function. So before starting opioid therapy, the prescriber and the patient have to set realistic goals of what to expect when using the opioid drug. And once those goals are met, then the opioid drug should be discontinued. Or if there is any harm that is experienced during the treatment with opioid, then that drug also should be discontinued. And lastly, under this category, it talks about discussing benefits and risks and availability of non-opioid treatment with patient. And again, this ties back to the first point that we talked about opioids are not first line or routine therapy for chronic pain. So the second part of the guideline talks about opioid selection, dosage, duration, follow-up, and discontinuation. Use immediate release opioids when starting. Uh, using extended release or sustained release or long-acting formulation are dangerous. These ones should only be reserved for those patients who are already using opioids on a chronic basis. Patients who are being treated on acute illness, acute injury, acute accident, pain due to acute illness should always be treated using an immediate release opioid as opposed to extended release opioid. Another point they talked about is start low and go slow. And this makes sense. When opioids are started, prescribers should prescribe the slowest, the lowest effective dose. Prescribers should use caution when prescribing opioids at any dosage, should carefully assess reassess evidence of individual benefits and risks when considering increasing the dose. 
another point they talked about under this category of opioid selection, dosage duration, follow-up, and discontinuation is when opioids are needed for acute pain, prescribe no more than what is needed. Usually in their guideline, they talk about three days. Most acute pain, you only need a three-day supply and rarely do you need more than seven days supply. And lastly, follow up and re-evaluate risk of harm, reduce dose or taper and discontinue if needed. The last part of the guideline talks about assessing risks and addressing harm of opioid use. So evaluate risk factors for opioid related harms before starting and periodically during continuation of opioid treatment, prescribers should evaluate risk factors for opioid related harms. These risk factors include history of overdose, history of substance use disorder, higher dose opioid or concurrent benzodiazepine use. Prescribers should incorporate into the management plan strategies to manage risk including considering offering naloxone when the risk factors are present. Uh, check PDMP for high dosage and prescription from other providers. Uh, PDMP is a database that is used by pharmacies from many states. Uh, pharmacies are required to submit all information relating to prescription for opioids to this database and then prescribers go into this database and they look at patients to see what opioid medication are these patients using at that time. Uh, it could be probably from a different clinic, from a different provider, or it could be even from a different state. Use urine drug testing to identify prescribed substances and undisclosed use. So most of these uh, pain clinic or pain doctors they require patients to sign an opioid agreement form and in that agreement one of the clause most likely will say that for that particular patient to qualify to continue getting opioid prescription from that doctor or from that clinic they are supposed to not take any illicit drugs and urine test is one way to determine if there is a, a breach of contract. If the patient is using illicit drugs, then most likely that prescriber of that clinic will not agree to prescribe opioids for that patient anymore. Avoid concurrent benzodiazepine and opioid prescribing. There is many studies to show how dangerous is using opioid and benzodiazepine. Benzodiazepine are drugs such as Xanax, Valium. If you use them together, there is higher increased risk for drug overdose and drug abuse and many other issues related to opioid use. And lastly, under this guideline, under this um, section of uh, assessing risks and addressing harms, is arrange treatment for opioid use disorder if needed. If opioid use disorder, disorder is detected, prescribers should offer drugs that will help patients such as buprenorphine or methadone in combination with behavioral therapies. Now I want to briefly talk about the second part of the presentation. Unfortunately, there have been many reports of misapplication of this guideline. One of the stories that shocked me was described in the STAT news website about a patient with severe pain due to metastatic prostate cancer. This particular patient was prescribed an opioid medication, but when he went to the pharmacy to get his medication filled, the pharmacist refused to fill the prescription and called the patient a drug seeker. Patient felt ashamed after being called a drug seeker and went home without the opioid medication, hoping to endure his pain. Three days later, the patient tried to kill himself, but fortunately he was discovered by family member and survived. This is one example, and there are many more. 
This prompted the authors of the CDC guideline for prescribing opioids for chronic pain to write a commentary last month in the New England Journal of Medicine regarding misapplication of the guideline. CDC also issued a statement last month and say that it commends efforts by healthcare providers and systems, quality improvement organizations, payers and states to improve opioid prescribing and reduce opioid misuse and overdose. However, some policies and practices are not consistent with the recommendation in the guideline. The guideline is intended for primary care clinicians treating chronic pain for patients 18 years and older, but physicians have been limiting or cutting off opioid scripts for patients in active cancer treatment, those experiencing acute sickle cell crisis, or even those experiencing post-surgical pain. And finally, the guideline does not support abrupt tapering or sudden discontinuation of opioids. These practices can result in severe opioid withdrawal symptoms, including pain and psychological distress, and some patients might seek other sources of opioids. In addition, policies that mandate hard limits conflict with the guidelines emphasis on individualized assessment of the benefits and risks of opioids given the specific circumstances and unique needs of each patient. Thanks for watching. I will be making new content frequently, so be sure to subscribe and turn the notification on. This is going to wrap it up for this video. Stay healthy and bye for now.